So my name's Sam, I'm the Education Programme Manager for Genetic Hemochromatosis, well, Hemochromatosis UK. Um, I'm just going to give you an introduction to who we are and um, what we're all about. So, we're a patient-led charity and we want to make people more aware of hemochromatosis, support patients with it, educate people, healthcare professionals, GPs and members of the public and educa um, educate and do research. So hemo what? So lots of people struggle to say it, so it's hemochromatosis. And it is a genetic disorder which causes people to absorb too much iron from the diet. And this can cause iron overload, which is characterized by joint pain, chronic fatigue, weakness, psychological problems, heart problems and liver problems. And we're gonna go into symptoms further on. Now, over 380,000 people are affected in the UK, and it was thought to be a rare disorder, but it's now the most common genetic disorder amongst the white European population in the UK. So you can imagine there is quite a lot of people out there. It's actually twice the size of Glastonbury. So just a visual there for how many people are actually affected with hemochromatosis that are living undiagnosed. Now, one in 113 people are infected in Ireland and Scotland as it has a Celtic descent. But in England and Wales, it's one in 150. And there's nine, 80 to 90 percent of people remain undiagnosed. So if you think of a GP practice with about 9,000 people registered, there's going to be 53 people affected and 48 of those could potentially be undiagnosed. So you can see it's really important to raise awareness of it. And it can be serious. So if untreated, it can cause uh, liver cancer, cirrhosis, heart failure, diabetes, and all these other disorders that people are living with that could be prevented. So they, if someone has iron overload, they are four times more likely to develop liver disease and two times more likely to get arthritis. And for every two people with diabetes, three people with iron overload will develop the disease. And for every two people who get pneumonia, three people with iron overload will develop the infection. So you can see it's really important that we diagnose these patients. Now, overall, one in five men and one in eight women will get liver disease, arthritis and diabetes. So if we can eradicate the people that are getting these problems because of hemochromatosis, then we'll be reducing the number overall. So it's 6% of all liver cancers are caused by genetic hemochromatosis. Now, going on to the symptoms, so early symptoms that people might present with in um, primary care, uh, arthritis, particularly in these fingers, and it's been known as the bronze fist because it's these fingers that have been affected, and chronic fatigue and weakness, abdominal pain. So people could be presenting or they might have a history of IBS, but that could be down to hemochromatosis, and cognitive problems. So. Um, memory, mood swings, irritability, sorry, <laughs> uh, depression, but also people have described it as a bit of brain fog or difficulty sequencing events. And then sexual disorders, loss of sex drive, impotence in men, and then it can affect females' periods, so they could be absent or irregular. And then this goes back to the iron fist, the name that has been given previously. So iron deposits in the skin can make the skin look either tanned or grey, um, and also people can get kind of breakouts of skin disorders. And then the heart, heart, the heart problems, heart failure and cardiomyopathy, and diabetes. So if it's not diagnosed and iron overloads the pancreas, it can go on and cause diabetes. And then liver disorders, abnormal liver functions, enlarged liver, cirrhosis and then liver cancer. Now it affects northern um, European ancestry more and it is a recessive gene. 
So here's the little diagram here. So if you have two parents and both parents are carriers of the mutation, then the, the baby's got a 25% chance that in the future they'll develop iron overload, 50% chance of being a carrier as well, and 25% chance of being okay. So you can see the prevalence is only going to get even, even more. And uh, carriers may be unaffected, but can obviously then pass that on to their children. And people affected are at increased health risk if they're not treaters, as I've just said. Now, rates of iron overload. So there are different types of mutations. So it's the HFE gene on chromosome 6, which is the mutation. And the C282i homozygote accounts for 95% of everybody with iron overload. And that's also the highest risk of, of, of overload in iron. And then the C282i H63d, that's a compound heterozygote. And that's the second highest risk. But as you can see, that's 4% of everybody. And then there's the H63d homozygote, which is little risk of iron overload. There are more mutations, um, but they are rarer ones, and there's still research being done into them and how they can cause iron overload and the rates there. So in men and women, we have the normal and abnormal levels of serum ferritin and transferrin saturation there. So these are the indications of iron overload and what should be tested in primary care. So serum ferritin, normal levels for men are 15 to 300. So anything over that's abnormal. If you get someone that presents and you test them and their serum ferritin is as high as 1,000, they need instant referral to hepatology due to uh, any increased risk to the liver. And in women, it's 15 to 200, so anything over 200 is considered abnormal. And then transfer and saturation levels should be below 50% in men and below 45% in women. So again, if Tsat's higher than that, that's a good indication of hemochromatosis. Now, when to seek genetic testing. So when a patient's presented with symptoms and they've been tested but with their serum ferritin and transfer and saturation levels and they've proven to be high, then they should be sent for genetic testing. And most labs now offer the mutations of the C282i and H63d, and it is as cheap as £38 per patient. And if it comes back that the patient are um, positive for hemochromatosis, then family screening should be done, and that's to parents, adult children and siblings, because obviously siblings will have a 25% chance of being diagnosed with it as well. And obviously, if we make earlier diagnosis, then we save any problems that we've talked about in the symptoms. Now, this is a typical patient care pathway. So if a patient presents with pain and fatigue and any other symptoms, so any other unrelated symptom that doesn't quite add up to their history, um, they should be sent for their serum ferritin and trans for, uh, transaturation levels and if they are high they should be sent for the genetic testing now if it comes back that they are a carrier and their serum, fer serum ferritin is still over 1000 again they need referral to hepatology um, if they can keep being high and there's no other explanation for it it may be considered that they have a rarer form of mutation and need to be sent for next generation sequences to see if they have got hemochromatosis but in a rarer form. If they are C282i homozygote or C282i H63 compound heterozygote, they should then be sent to hepatology or gastroenterology and commence venesection and family screening, as I said, should be offered and genetic counselling. Now, the treatment is simple and really effective. So treatment is just the blood removal, so just giving blood. And there's two stages, the iron removal phase. Now, this is when the serum ferritin range is over um, 100. And this is done usually weekly. So the patient will give blood uh, once a week until their iron levels are normal. And this can take up to two years for them to get to normal levels. So two years of given blood once a week. So you can see it's quite an involved process. 
but many of the symptoms are then alleviated. The only symptom that it tends not to be is the joint pain if arthritis is already present. After this, it goes on to the maintenance phase where blood will be given two to three times a year and that can be given through the blood donor service as well so that it's, not, it's then recycled, so to speak. Now there are other treatments, so this is given to people that have difficulty finding their veins, if they're needle phobic and this is a drug that can be given but that can be given orally and intravenously so if they have got a vein problem it's still a, a bit of a problem. <laughs> Um, so it can be given orally and there is also a part to play for protein pump inhibitors and it has been shown that patients taking protein pump inhibitors it's actually slowed down the absorption of iron but obviously it then slows down absorption of other nutrients and vitamins that people are taking so it should be done under dietitian's advice and closely monitored. Now, for future information, we have no nice guidelines around diagnosis or treatment for hemochromatosis at the moment. So we work by the British Society of Hematology um, and they are the approved guidelines and they have the recommendations for family screening and when to refer. Now, uh, we are at H34. If you would like to come and see us, we have print out of the guidelines if you're interested. If not, you can download them from our website. We also have leaflets and plenty of resources for GPs, for patients, to do with healthy eating, for diagnosis, um, and all sorts of resources on our stand if you want to come and get some. And we also give a help and advice line for patients to call if they need any advice further. Um, we've got advice line cards on our stand but there's the number there if anybody would like to write that down. And I am the education program manager so I go out to GP surgeries and do CPD sessions, uh, go in a bit more detail of the presentation, give people more advice and that can be face to face training and I also do webinars and we have Royal College of GP accredited e-learning on their website as well if anyone would like to take that. And we are here to help. So all our advice and resources are free. If you want to write down my contact details, that's me on the slide there. And as I say, we're at H34 if you want to speak to us in further. And we also have membership to Hemochromatosis UK. So these are anyone affected by iron overload can become members and we give them information packs and get people involved and give advice and support further along the journey for patients. Uh, thank you for listening. Any questions? No? Hello. I think a microphone is now coming over to you. Thank you. Uh, so what is the recommended screening for the family? So it is adult children, siblings... So what tests? What tests? Uh, genetic testing and um, so they'll be sent for genetic testing to see if they're carriers or if they have both copies of the mutation and then for so for example for the children say that the child's 20 and they have family screening done and it comes back that they do have the two mutated copies they're then uh, monitored I think the guidelines at the moment are every three years so they'll be checked every three years just to check that they're not overloading iron but it's also parents and siblings. Any other questions? There's one just here. Are the other blood tests, like the, I, the HB um, red blood cells affected prior to the we, testing? We um, only go by the the two tests that we said are the only indicative tests that can be done uh, but we obviously like people to have their liver function tests done just to check there's no liver damage and a full blood count as well just to check that there's nothing else that's being missed but transfer and saturation and serum ferritin are the top two that are the indicative tests to do.